Hi, my name is Stephanie, and this is my testimony. I was born into a Christian household, and my dad being a pastor, my mom a worship leader, and with three older brothers, and I remember accepting God into my heart at a young age. Eight years old is when I had my first kind of special encounter with God. It's where I had this special download of knowledge that I knew if Elvis Presley and Whitney Houston, who died of drug overdoses, could not find fulfillment from fame and from wealth and from personal accomplishments, that neither could I find accomplishment or fulfillment from those things. And so that knowledge shaped all my dreams and my ambitions, which means it really cut them out from underneath my feet because I knew those things would never fulfill me. And so growing up, I didn't go out into the world and rebel against God on purpose. I just was lukewarm. I wasn't really on fire for him. I went to church three times a week and I did what I was supposed to do, but I didn't hide God's word in my heart and he wasn't my love and my passion. In fact, the only dream I had when I became a teenager was going and getting my bachelor's. So that's what I did. At 17, I started going to a community college and then I transferred to a different college and I got my bachelor's in business, which was never really interesting to me in the first place and it wasn't my passion. But people said, you can make a living off of that and everyone knows that you can't make a good income, at least this is what they told me, off of a music degree. So I didn't pursue that route. Instead, I went and I got my bachelor's in business and that was my single ambition and my single dream in life. I didn't want a PhD or a master's and I didn't want to go off and achieve this or that. That's all I wanted. And so after college, I really struggled with depression and being addicted to entertainment, mostly reading countless romance books and fantasy books and watching anime, reading manga and watching Korean dramas and Asian dramas. and. I had already been addicted to those things for years and years, but without college taking up my time because of all of the essays and tests I had to take, I was able to start really binging on them and so I spiraled even deeper. As I said, I didn't have any dreams or hope for the future. The devil told me, though at the time I didn't recognize it was his voice, your life is over, you're done, there's nothing more for you. And so no matter what I read or watched, I could not get fulfillment and I was miserable. I felt so empty inside. I didn't have a purpose for living. I had rededicated my life to Jesus Christ at the last semester of my college and that is when I started writing songs for God. But even then, that wasn't enough to set me free from depression and the storm of negative thoughts I had in my mind and that I struggled with and the negative words I would speak. And of course, my parents were praying for me. My father, a pastor, he constantly was encouraging me, hide the word of God in your heart, Stephanie. And he would encourage all of his people in his congregation to do so. In fact, he'd spend years stressing and encouraging the importance of hiding God's word in your heart. And so finally, I said to dad, okay, I do want to start doing this, but what verse do I start with? There are thousands of them. What do you want me to do? Why don't you put something together for me? And that's what my dad did. He took all of his memory cards, he put them together, and he wrote my daily meditations, scriptures to live by, and he even dedicated it to me in the first few pages. So he printed that book and he gave me a copy. But sadly, for the first few months, I didn't touch it. I remember walking past it one day, and I heard the verse, Study to show thyself approved unto God. And I thought, I'm tired of studying, especially since I had just gotten out of college after being there for years. And so, thank God, the Holy Spirit is very patient and gentle and full of mercy. And after several months, I finally picked the book up. But when I picked it up and I turned to the first page, it was... Psalm 1, 1 to 3, and I thought, blessed is the man that walketh in what? What? And I really struggled to memorize it, so I went back to my dad and I said, Dad, I can't memorize this. I'm really struggling. He says, why don't you give a tune to it? And so I went back to my office, I picked up the book, I opened up to the page, and I started tuning my very first scripture song. 
Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And that was the beginning of scripture songs for me. And that is when I started tuning verse after verse and hiding them in my heart. And finally, I started having a turnaround in my life. With every verse that I was meditating on, faith started growing in my heart. And I started to get more and more free of the lies of Satan because I started recognizing for the first time in my life he was the one whispering all those dark thoughts to me and telling my life was over and there was no hope for me and I had no reason to live. And I, I started recognizing that there's such a thing called vain, useless thoughts. And I memorized the verse, I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. And so I started casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And in doing that, I started recognizing that there are godly thoughts, the ones that agree with the word of God and his character and his nature versus devilish ones that disagree with God and they're opposite of God's character and nature. They're full of accusations and anger and bitterness and hopelessness and despair. And then I learned death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And so I finally realized I had to stop speaking death over myself. I had to stop speaking death over my circumstances and what I was going through. And that no corrupt communication was to proceed out of my mouth. Instead, I started speaking life. I started speaking the word of God over my life. The Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed? And I wanted to walk together with God. But the only way I could do that was if... I agreed with him. And so I also learned the power of praying to God and how he said, Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And he says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer believing, ye shall receive. And so bit by bit, these chains of Satan, this hopelessness, the depression, they started going away and God started giving me new hopes and he started giving me new dreams. I started singing scripture songs and putting them up on YouTube and writing more music and I started praying to God more and being able to communicate with him more and recognize his voice versus the devil's voice and God started giving me grace to give up things that didn't belong in my life and things that were getting between us or things that were just draining me of my life and my energy and my time and I started seeing more answers to prayer and God slowly but surely pruned me of saying and thinking things that didn't belong in my mind or coming out of my mouth. And since then, it's been over eight years. And it's been a journey full of up and downs where God has slowly but surely pruned me of thinking and acting and behaving in ways that are contrary to the to the word of God and to stop believing what the world believes and start thinking like God believes no matter what everybody says. And so every time I now struggle with fear or depression or sorrow because we all go through those things and that's not going to stop until we finally meet Jesus face to face and he transforms us and we no longer have to fight against the enemy. But now God is able to use those scriptures which I've hidden in my heart because remember the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the casting down of strongholds. And the word of God is the sword of the spirit, which we use to cut those things off. And so now I'm able to take those words, which I've hidden in my heart, and use them to fight against depression and sorrow and say, I will rejoice evermore. I will pray without ceasing and everything I'll give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning me. And God, he's given me new dreams and new hopes. He's given me his promises and 
and his word and, and made them very clear to me. And he's replaced that darkness that was in my heart that I couldn't get rid of through my own strength. And he's replaced it with his light, his light that keeps on shining brighter and brighter. And it keeps me from drowning and floundering in the storms of life. And when other people are running around in fear, I, I start singing again that I will trust in him with all my heart and not lean onto my own understandings. In all my ways, I'll acknowledge him and he will direct my path and says, great peace have they that love thy law and nothing shall offend them. And so I just take the word of God for every circumstance that I come up against and I just keep on singing it or speaking it or praying it and God uses that to set me free from the devices of Satan. I remember hearing my mom tell me that when she was young, God told her, the more word you hide in your heart, the more I am able to speak to you. And that is proven true for me, that the more word of God that I have hidden in my heart, the more he is able to speak to me, to comfort me, guide me, correct me, warn me, encourage me, and deliver me. And there are so many Christians out there like me that we've accepted God in our hearts and we're going to church and we do want to be like God, but we are so full of doubt and depression and we're floundering and drowning in life because we haven't hit God's word in our hearts. And sadly, I've heard Christians say who have been Christians for 20, 30, 40 years, well, I don't know that many scriptures and it's just too hard to memorize them. And so they only know one or two verses, if even that. But God doesn't want us to do that because it's his word that will set us free. And we aren't to stop with only one or two verses. I remember after I learned my first few verses, I kept hearing a whisper in my mind that said, you know enough verses now. You don't need to learn anymore. And it kept on saying that over and over. I ignored that whisper, which I now recognize was the enemy trying to stop me. And I continued to hide God's word in my heart. And I still continue to tune and sing and hide God's word in my heart. And with each one I do, I learn more and more of God's truth. And the Bible says, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And that word is so very true. And now, one of my biggest dreams is to help Christians everywhere, to no longer be punch bags of Satan, where he's constantly whispering lies in their mind and filling them full of depression, addictions, fear, and horrible thoughts, and where he's leading them astray because they don't know the truth and they fall for every ploy and deception of the enemy. But in order for us to get free, we have to know the truth, not just in our heads, but in our hearts. And when we sing God's word, when we meditate on it enough, it goes from our head to our hearts and it sets us free. Those who are captives and slaves to Satan and his deceptions, and it makes us become full of light and life. The Bible says, if thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. And in hiding God's word in our heart and meditating on it in our minds, all of a sudden we are focused on Jesus and we become full of light. And this is an ongoing process because we're constantly fighting against the enemy and we're constantly Constantly needing to go back to meditate on God's word to fill our hearts and our minds with it just like we have to keep on eating food and drinking water or we will waste away until we die the Bible says unless ye eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood you have no life in you he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day for my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed so we have to eat God's word or we will have no life in us and that is what I'm encouraging people to do now so they can get free and be guided and have light in their life like I do now even though yes we have to keep on fighting but now we have the weapon of the Word of God that we need to fight against Satan and his devices so I hope you find my testimony encouraging and I hope you will take it to heart and say I'm going to do that. I'm going to go and hide God's word in my heart and discover his truth that will set me free. And I'm going to speak it over my circumstances. And I'm going to walk by faith and lay hold to it no matter what Satan says. So I strongly encourage you to start with my life-changing scripture series. 
There are over 52 of them. There are one for each week of the year. And you can also buy this book, the ones my daily meditations, and do what I did and learn it from beginning to the end. I've already given a tune to all the scriptures and made playlists out of them. So you can go to my YouTube page and find them. Or you can choose a particular topic like peace, joy, or divine guidance, or the mouth, or thoughts, and go to that playlist and then start listening to those scriptures and memorizing them and m meditating on them from day to day. Don't let the devil talk you out of learning God's word, out of meditating on it. Don't let him say, well, you can't sing in tune. She can do that, but you can't do that. That's a lie of Satan, and he will use any excuse in the book, any deception to keep you from hiding God's word in your heart because he knows that when you know the truth, it will set you free from his machinations. And so ignore him, dig deep into God's word. And when you do that, it will bring a great transformation in your life. And one day you will also have a testimony. And when that day comes, go ahead and leave a comment below and tell me what great things that God has done for you and what he's still doing for you. And that way other people can also read your story and be encouraged by it. So go ahead and start today. Don't put it off till tomorrow. That's another ploy of Satan. He wants to distract you and you can say, well, tomorrow I'll start. No, choose one today. You can choose an extra short one or a slightly longer one. And I will end with this verse. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. I'll see you later.